Counter heals are a new type of heal trigger that were introduced in DBT05 as well as Festival Collection 2022. These are regular heal triggers that still heal one damage as usual as well as give plus 10,000 power when checked, but instead of their usual 15k shield that they usually give, these heal triggers only give 10,000 shield instead and come with a special effect that procs depending on a certain condition. There are two types which are both printed in either DBT05 or Festival Collection 2022 and these either benefit you when the opponent has an extra critical on the unit that they are attacking with due to an effect or when a unit on their turn has restood at least once. The restanding counter heals read as the following. When placed on the guardian circle, if your opponent's attacking unit has attacked two or more times this turn, then this unit gets plus 15,000 shield until end of that battle. So this will also work if a unit has attacked three times too. The critical counter heal reads, when this unit is put on guardian circle, if the attacking unit's critical is two or greater, and its critical is increased by an ability other than trigger effect or its original critical is two or greater, this unit gets shield plus 15,000 until end of that battle. These are the two types of counter heals and they're generally referred to as counter heals and called either anti-critical or anti-restand. Thus, they become a total of 25k shield in one card if the condition is satisfied. Now, initially when these cards released, they were actually not rated very highly, and a lot of people just said, well, why would I run this when, if the condition isn't satisfied, they're just 10k shields and I'm giving up total shield value from my deck as a result. Overall, the trade-off of 10k shield with an effect or 15k base wasn't actually seen as that great, and most players decided to stick with 15 k base heal triggers instead for the longest time. And there is a reason to this, as many would ask, like, why weren't these counter heals played before? The main reason is, is that back then, the strongest deck in the meta was Magnolia, and against this deck, neither did the crit one or the restand one do anything. Because Magnolia enables all six of its units to attack, it doesn't give extra critical to any of its units, and nothing actually restands, everything only swings once. The other second best deck that was considered back then was Kairi, and Kairi also doesn't get affected by any any of these because Kyrie bounces its attackers and calls them and attacks with them again, therefore the same unit is not making two attacks even if they bounce and call the same unit again because it's considered as a new instance of that same unit. And as a result against Kyrie and Magnolia, you wanted more general shield to drop against his attacks, so the 10k shield was actually quite weak. However, Nirvana and Bastion were some of the decks that were still quite popular in the meta, but they weren't as popular as the first two decks that we mentioned. So some people were starting to play Reese and heals because they were good against Nirvana as well as Bastion. However, the meta has shifted greatly since then, with Magnolia being restricted and a lot of other decks propping up that both gain the criticals through their effects or restand rearguards. And we've seen a lot of new additions of decks that have shifted this opinion through the meta as well. For the counter heals that gain crits, you now have Gravidia, of course, that's always been popular, where the Vanguard as well as Bakubidito gains crits. Buff Sagara has been a very popular deck as well, and Buff Sagara gains extra crits on her own effect. Eva has been a very popular new deck that has been, you know, gaining a lot of strength through the support of the promo, where Obscadate is a 23k or 33k attacker with an extra crit, where again, a counter heal will stop that due to being 38k together with your Vanguard in total defense power. Youthberg Zest is, of course, Youthberg a very popular deck, and Zest, of course, gains a crit as well. Phantom Blaster Overlord is another very strong deck that gains a crit from its own on-attack skill. Asakura-yo gains crits from on-attack as well, and technically restands too if you use Ana. Barrow Magnus is another deck that gains crits on attack, so therefore the counter heal is strong there too. And Prison, if you let it let loose and gain to 10 Prison, will also give crit to its front row, where the crit counter heals will also be very strong. For the restand ones, as previously mentioned, Mahar has a restanding rearguard in the Virena Esperal idea, where again it's strong to guard against it because it's going to be a pretty big attack too. Flagberg has many restanding rearguards, such as the Inlet Pulse and the Ascendance Assault, where again you will be very happy to see those restanding counter heals. Overlord is a restanding vanguard where the end will usually swing twice, and you will want those counter heals to help protect against those restanding attacks with many triggers on them. Bruce is a deck that has gained immense popularity in set 6 thanks to the support of Julian, which now allows you to, again, have very strong restanding rearguards, as well as, you know, big Marjorie swings, as well as big Julian swings. Bastion is still a deck that has been quite popular and will still gain more popularity in the set 7 format, and Bastion, of course, is all about restanding the board after checking grade 3s. Going forward, we also have Drajul that is 
supposed to be gaining a restanding rearguard, so it's going to be pretty strong there too. And I guess Eugen is going to be restanding its own vanguard going forward, which again will have another counter heal be effective against that one too. But all I've done so far is list a bunch of decks that these counter heals are good against. But which one is right for the deck that you play? First and foremost, I think you should evaluate the local meta. Do you have a lot of the first kinds of decks where they gain a bunch of crits like Gravidia and Youthberg and Barrow Magnus? Or is your meta mostly Mahar and Overlord and Bruce, where the restanding ones would be a lot stronger? Always consider your local meta first to make sure that you're teching for the right matchups. Otherwise, if you're preparing for something like regionals or you go to a bunch of different locals where the meta is generally speaking quite random and the meta decks are also very spread out, then I think you want to look at your deck's weakness. And let me give you an example of that. The main deck that I play in standard right now is Eva. Eva has a lot of disposable shield value, such as the Obscadates that are 10k shields, as well as the combined rushers that I'm always happy to discard as 5k shield. And as a result, when I go up against multi-attacking decks, I have quite a lot of disposable shield, and I can drop those for the smaller restanding attacks, such as in the Flagberg matchup. However, against big attacks, you know, such as Gravidia, or Asakura Yo, or PBO, or even the Mirror match, I'm really happy to have the crit counter heals, because there, I can just drop one or two cards to guard those big attacks, because a lot of the shield in my hand is around 10 or 5k, and then I have to put in triggers for the 15ks. So as a result, I have an easier time guarding restanding attacks with all the cards in my deck, and the counter heals help me bolster my defenses against decks that gain extra crits. So as a result, I think that decks with heavy defenses might want the crit ones more, so think of things like Bafsagara that has the extra defense from the shield, and the combo part heavy decks such as, you know, Bruce as well as Barrow and Nirvana might want the restanding ones more so you don't lose a bunch of your combo parts trying to guard the big restanding attacks. However, this isn't a blanket safety net statement, so make sure to playtest accordingly and see which of the counter heals are better for you. Overall, these counter heals are definitely going to be more popular in the future going forward. They have been very popular in the set 6 format, and I think going into set 7 and beyond, we're going to see them be played more and more and more, so I would definitely pick them up while they're cheap if you haven't already. With that though, that has been my little video on the counter heals. Let me know your thoughts on the counter heals in the comments below, and as always, if you liked the video, please do give it a like, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. But other than that, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.